Okay, mm -hmm. good evening, everyone. I welcome you yet again to our our usual Tuesday evening of each one, each one series. Uh, today, in today's chats on our official WhatsApp groups, you notice that the if the, the issue of if function has been raised again. Uh, from my memory, this was raised a few a few days ago, and it keeps on coming again and again. Now, because of our 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 willingness to teach each other, you see, we are all educators, but we can't know everything. So we keep learning from each other. So we decided to deal with my colleague, Mr. Wamono Michael, that we should invite Mr. Wajuri Moses, although it was on short notice, to guide us through the if function. What I want to encourage our fellow teachers is that when, uh, when you go through a paper and you're having a challenge on, on a single, on a number, uh, it would be good, of course, to solve it first because you're marking, but it would also be necessary that you go back now and revisit that topic. Because if it comes over uh, again and again, uh, some people will think we are not serious with our work. So that's why today we are here and Moses Wajuri is going to, to guide us. Uh, for those uh, who don't know, uh, Mr. Woji, Mo, Moses Wajuri is a member of the executive of the ICT Teachers Association of Uganda. I sit with him on the executive. And Mr. Wajuri has helped us by providing us with empty CDs. For those who don't have, I remember last year towards mock, uh, CDs became an issue. I remember someone gave me money to get them CDs. I had to refund the money because I couldn't get them anywhere. Uh, Mr. Wajuri has come up with an initiative. He has talked to them in advance such that we don't suffer like we suffered last year. And then the other thing is that the Each One Teach One series is not a one-man show. Uh, there are people who are behind it. And one of them is Mr. Wamono Maiko. Mr. Amono Michael is the CEO of uh, Mr. Amono Michael is the CEO of, of MK Graphics, and he's the one who does the graphics work for us. Thank you so much, Mr. Amono. So, if you need stuff like flyers, birthday cards, and stuff like that, I think Amono is a good option for us. And then I don't know whether we have Mr. Rogers Mukarede on call. But Mr. Mukarele has supported us so much in ways that you people don't know behind the scenes. When we are planning this, he gives us a lot of ideas here and there. And yeah, to see that the stuff is running. Then also, I want you to remember there is the Geek Village, uh, the Kings of Computer Repair. Uh, yeah, we do computer repair, especially for schools. That is the Geek Village. The contacts are there. So for now, uh, without much uh, further ado, without further ad ado, I want to welcome Mr. Wajuri. Mr. Wajuri, are you online? I'm going to stop the screen share so that you share yeah, with yes, us what you have for us. Yes, yes, Steve, I'm online. Yes, um, thank you. I'm simply getting a little disappointed with my machine because what I mean, uh, I even used the Zoom yesterday, but right now it's it's asking me for updates and I'm trying to update, it's failing, but I'm working on it without uh, tiring. I know we're going to be able to, to do whatever we're supposed to do today. Uh, I don't know whether you're hearing me, members. Yes, Mr. Wajuri, you're clear. I'm so much glad that uh, I have been given this chance to take on this discussion today. It has been long overdue. And uh, I'm very much glad that members have uh, turned up in big numbers. So I just hope that the day will be very smooth for us. And uh, we run this to the very end successfully. Uh, to begin with, I want to appreciate 
everyone who raises a concern, everyone who is willing to, to learn, to participate, to help, to guide as we uh, engage in this, our very, very noble profession. I myself, I call it a God given profession because it only takes resilience for someone to be able to get so much involved in this profession and uh, do their very best due to very many disappointed. Uh, disappointments that people find along the way. Uh, and on a very good note, I also want to say that uh, I'm here. I hope that it's going to be a session that we are simply going to engage and share. And then uh, see if we can actually have a breakthrough uh, in the very many areas, more so uh, for the specific one that I've been given today, the if function, uh, to be able to see how best we can do it and how we can make it simple, not only for us, the teachers, but even for our students. Uh, in most cases, myself when I'm teaching spreadsheet, I tell my students, this is the most interesting topic that anyone else should actually strive to understand. Reason is because it's applicable in the real world. Personally. There's nothing like Excel is just for Excel. Excel is applicable anywhere in our real life situations. And that's, that makes me actually feel, I, I feel like when I'm teaching Excel, I, I always tell my students, I feel myself because it is, an applica it, it is applicable in the real world situations. So one thing that we just need to understand when we're teaching Excel is that we have to make these things look simple to us and to the students. Now the question is, how do you make them simple to the students? My answer would be, the best way is first of all, making them simple to you as a teacher. I'm running out of data, let me just buy a new bundle because as I can see, I'm, I'm, I think I'm running out. Now, we first need to make this simple to us as, as, as teachers before we can even make it simple to the learners. Because the moment you go to class to teach these functions and you are not steady, believe me, the learners are going to find the subject very, very hard. And yet in simple, I mean in Excel is very. Uh, Steve, am I still online? Uh, yeah, you're now online. Hey, Steve. Yes, you are. Oh, the, I, I think the challenge is that I'm buying data. That's why. That's why I am. I am maybe on and off. I was, run, I was running out of data. Now, uh. We have to make this Excel look very, very simple to the students. And I was saying, before this happens, you as a teacher, you must make Excel. Excel look simple to you, such that you are any fear and without showing the learners that you are also not sure of what you're doing. That way, you are going to make Excel, simple. That's what I always tell my colleagues. Oh, and actually that's what I chose to do before I even got myself uh, into teaching Excel. And over the years, I have found it as the most interesting topic that learners can ever understand. Now, let's get to the, to the roots of, uh, uh, I'm, I'm trying to join with my computer. Re Steve, can you read for me the, the, the whatever the code? Man, I'm just suffering here. Steve? Hey, Steve. Yes, I can get you. Yeah, read for me the, the whatever, the code. 882. 882. 8609. Oh, meeting passcode. Sorry, sorry. No, no. Yes. It's okay. It's okay. 
I was asking for the passcode, I got it. Now, Steve, I'm yeah, going yes, to break please. for one minute. I mean, for one minute, and I rejoin because I'm breaking for one minute, and then I rejoin. Okay. I'm not oh, no worry. With my computer. No worry. Okay. Uh, okay, as we wait for Mr. Wedjuri, uh, I wanted to highlight that we are going to be doing this every Tuesday, and there is a call for volunteers. If there is a topic that you'd really love to share with us, please get in touch with me or Mr. Wamono Michael, so that you can do your graphics in time and also uh, have a small discussion before you start, before, you, before we have you on our schedule. Uh, I've seen Mr. Kakuru has shared widely. So Mr. Kakuru, you're one of the candidates for this. You have to please feature on one of our, in this series of each one, teach one. I don't know whether there is anyone else. Yeah, I can, uh, I can also volunteer to take colleagues in uh, uh, calculations in uh, forms of database. Mm -hmm. wow. Database calculations basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah, where we are seeing that the database and we, and we entertain teachers to ask all the questions they have regarding access queries, access forms, and reports. Uh, on that, on that day, I, I request someone to be the tech lead for me. On that day, I'll be a student. <laughs> sure. I'll be the learner, so someone should volunteer to be the tech lead for that particular session. Me and Access, okay, we, okay. Are like, we, are, we are like four wives. Info Yes, any other volunteer? Yes, we got Mr. Kakuru. Do we have another volunteer? Hello. This is Jonathan from Germany. Yes, Pandere Labs. Yeah, yeah Pandere Labs, I appreciate this. And I'm Thank also you. a member in a Tau group. Uh, yes. The idea for on access normally the challenge comes on access, mm, doing calculation on form and then on queries. So mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to say also some questions that I face challenge on. Then yes. when they comes, uh, there are people who can help us and we learn. Yeah, and Mr. I Hakuru has also, volunteered. Okay, so I, I will say the challenges I faced on the platform. Thank you so much. Fine. So we have Mr. Wajma Moses Wajuri finally here with us. Uh, welcome back, Moses. Oh, thank you, Steve. I'm now back. I think I'm well connected. Yes, you I can hope, now take uh, over. I can now take over. Now, members, we are going to get started with the if function. The if function is actually one of the very most powerful functions in Excel. If you have ever uh, been so keen about it, it's very powerful in that it can do, it, it, it can make you think just beyond the, the simple instructions of find total, find uh, this, find that. It makes you to digest the instructions. It makes you to digest your data and understand your data before you even try to use it. I want to uh, straight away dive into it. I hope that uh, we shall have enough time to, to, to digest it completely and then understand it very well. Now I have various ways when I'm teaching my learners, I tell them that Excel is not only used to assign comments, but Excel can be used, I mean the if function can be used in several occasions. And basically, every time we have a situation where we have more than one condition, it's Excel that is our savior. For example, if we are going to assign comments to students based on the performance or based on uh, a range of marks, then definitely it's the E function that is going to come in, where we are going to ask Excel to check through whatever ranges we have provided and assign the appropriate comment. Sometimes we may also need to combine the if function with other functions 
to come up with what we want. But you also realize that the if function is the basis of the other, other functions for them to work. So it's a very, very powerful function. And uh, while teaching it, I like bringing it from the very least. In fact, uh, on the group today, remember, our president uh, advised that when teaching students or when setting exams rather, we shouldn't uh, give students more than three comments to assign. When I'm teaching my students, I teach them to the very depth of the if function. And uh, if I can just, uh, from whatever we are going to do, I will show that, I mean, we are not only looking at what we are teaching students, but as a teacher, it is incumbent on you to always go beyond what just the syllabus requires you to teach the learners. Because remember, my friends, the learners we deal with today are not only just students in class. They interact with these devices. They interact with very many other people. In class, you find them telling you, my brother does this, my brother does this. And yeah, those brothers go back home and tell them a lot of things. So if they have not grasped them well, they will come with raw, raw facts and then bring them to you. So if you're a teacher who has been only sticking to the syllabus, then you're going to find lots of challenges. Uh, so now can we get to the depth of the if function? Ideally, when we are doing it, the if function, uh, if we can observe, from our Excel spreadsheet here. If we just type in the if function, this is what it's going to ask us to provide. One, I'm just going to type it uh, somewhere here. I hope members can see my screen clearly well. Yes. So for instance, if we say is equal to if, and we go for the if function, this is what I first want members to understand. Every function that you use in Excel has what we call a syntax. And what's the purpose of the syntax? The purpose of the syntax is to guide you on how you are supposed to approach or how to, you're supposed to write or use or apply that function. In the if function, the syntax requires us to provide the logical test the value if true and the value if false. What is the logical test? If, for example, I say is equal to if A2 or let's say B2 is greater than or equal to maybe 90. I'm just doing this very raw. I have not put any data that we are using. This one here, we call it a logical test. And what does it mean? It means Excel is going to look at this value here that you provided the 90 and try this 90 here and try to compare it with the value in B2. So it's performing a test on the value that you have provided. Is it true that the value in B is greater than or equal to 90? So it's logic that Excel is testing. Now, what if Excel finds that indeed the value is greater than or equal to 90? It must have something to return. Now that becomes a value if true. And in this case, in, I mean, in most cases we say, assign a comment D1. So that implies if indeed it's true that the value in B2 is greater than or equal to 90, then Excel is going to give that value or to assign that value a D1. Otherwise, if it's not greater than nine, greater than or equal to 90, then Excel must be given another option. Now that option becomes what we call the value if false. Now, instead of talking with raw, I mean uh, without anything, let's get some data that we are going to work that we are going to work with. I'm going to go to my document here and borrow some data. I just want to get data from anywhere. Let's start with the very, very simple. Okay, these are marks of students that I want to pick. 
and I'm going to paste them in our Excel sheet. So right there, we have our marks. Now, uh, like everyone knows, we are going to add up the marks here and we are going to find how to use the if function after all this. So we are first of all going to find the total. This is a wrong value here. So we're going to find the total. Everyone already knows how to find the total. That's good. So our total is right there. Everyone knows how to find the average. Average of this. And then, yeah, we say, okay. So with the ranking, I guess I shouldn't go into this because everyone knows how to rank. Now, supposing we said, oh, I just want to change this subject so that they reflect the simplicity that I want to start with. Now, let me say, I'm going to call this one here English. I'm going to call this one here MTC. I'm going to call this one here SST. And I'm going to call this one here Science. And I'm going to remove this column so that we remain with only those columns there. And uh, yes, I think this is enough for us. Now here comes an instruction. We start from uh, the simple. So I'm going to remove this. And uh, instead of uh, position, I'm going to put comment. Then the examiner says that if a student scores between 250 and 400, of course, for the four subjects, we know that the total percentage is going to be 400, then that student should be promoted to the next class. This is for primary. A student who scores between 200 and 249, should be promoted on probation. And then finally, a student who scores uh, between zero and uh, 199 should be told to repeat the class. In primary, they repeat classes. Now, this is what the examiner wants. Or oh, this is what we want Excel to do for us. We won't do this task on our own because Excel has given. I mean, I always tell my students that if you're going to take your time to think through or look through the values and assign a comment by yourself, then you don't understand what Excel was made for. Well, because this is now a task that Excel can do very, very well. So we are going to tell Excel that check through and find if a total match is this, get promoted. If a total is this, do this. If a total is this, do this. Now, I also want to change some values here so that we exactly get what we want. So I'm going to make this 80. Uh, this one is close to 200. I'm going to make this one here 75. Perfect. So those ones fit. Then these ones lie between the second and then these ones are the last. So what do we do? We are going to come and say is equal to if. If what? We are testing the total. So you're saying if the total here for that student Ali is greater than or equal to 250, I guess members are seeing here, we are saying between 250 and 400. Now, why am I saying greater than or equal to 250? Because I know that after 250, all the values are going to be assigned, I mean, are going to be assigned the comment that we're going to give. And definitely there's no value that is going to be beyond 400 because the maximum total is 400. So we're going to say, if the value in F2, which is the total is greater than or equal to 250. Now that becomes our logical test, implying Excel is going to look at this value here and test and see whether it is indeed what we are testing it about. Is it true that the value is, is between 250 and 400 or not? 
Now we are going to say, if it is true that that value satisfies that, uh, that, that, that condition, then Excel should give it a comment promoted or should promote that student. Otherwise, what if it is not satisfying the comment or what if the condition is not uh, met? Then you should give Excel another option. But remember, we have two more options. So we are saying we still have probation and repeat. Now, in this case, instead of providing the value if false, you go back and perform another logical test. Then we are saying if this one now is greater than or equal to 200, then what should be done? It should be the student should be promoted on probation. Now, when you reach here, you realize that we have one last comment. So we have said if the value is greater than 250, greater or equal to 250, the student should be promoted. If the value is greater than or equal to 200, the student should be promoted on probation. And then we are saying if the, the score is between zero and 199, the student should repeat. But do we need to tell Excel that? It's obvious that Excel is going to look. If it is this, it will assign this. If it is this, it will assign this. And that implies if it is not greater than 250 and not greater than 200, then obviously it will have to be a value below those two specified values. And therefore we just go and say, let the student repeat. You don't need to perform another logical test there. So this value automatically becomes a value if false. So now what are we saying? If, it, if this one is true, then this is a sign. If not, then Excel will go to the second logical test. If this is true, then it will assign this. If it is also not true, then Excel will now look at your last option, which is repeat. And then finally in Excel, all the brackets that you open, you close them at the end. Now also check, we have used double quotes. For every comment that you're going to assign in Excel using the if function, you must put double quotes to indicate that it is a label. So when we get done with this and press enter, I'm very sure our comments will be right there. Well, now that is the first instance in which we can use the if function. Now I said, we are going to start from simple. So when we full, I mean, when we autofill that way, we can say that indeed Excel has tried to apply what we have told it to apply. It has applied repeat here automatically because for this value here does not fulfill the first condition and also does not fulfill the second condition. And therefore it automatically fulfills the third condition. Now that is the first way. The second way is when we are assigning particular grades or individual grades to these subjects here. Grades such as D1, D2, C3, C4. Just quickly, we can have here our, our grid, our scale. In most cases, school is, schools use 85 and above. Okay, let's say from 85 to 100 to give a D1. To give a D1. And then 80 to 84. That's always a D2. Then from uh, 70 to 79, it's always a C3. Then from uh, 65 to 69, it's always a C4. Then 
from uh, let's say 60 from 60 to what to 64 it's always a c5 okay i'm just taking these comments your school may be having a different scale and then uh, let's say from 50 to 59 they always give a c6 then from 45 to 49 it's in most cases a past seven then let's say from uh, 40 to 44 it's always a past eight and from zero to 40 i mean to 39 in most cases it's an f9 i don't know what your school does i'm getting this from myself so at this point we're supposed to assign these particular grades or these individual grades to these subjects here. Now, what do we do? We go and insert new columns. So I'll insert a column there. I'll insert a column there. Uh, I will insert a column here. Oh, yes, I will insert those two first. Mm -hmm. I will insert a column here. I'll insert a column here. Good. So there's a column for a comment for English. Let me just try to reduce this. Uh, then a comment for, uh, oh, I've inserted them behind, sorry. So I can leave this. I should leave this. So I need for English, I need one here. Good. So I have for English, I have for MTC, for SST, and for science. And here is our grid. So I'm going to, first of all, uh, remove these cells here, or rather I can just copy them, cut them and paste them somewhere else. Maybe I'm going to paste them down here. If I'm not to delete them, then I will just uh, uh, remove this so that they extend here. Well, so this is now what we are having. So at this point, we are saying, if a student has scored this, they should be given a D1. If they have scored this, it should be a D2, like that up to F9. So just quickly, I'm just going to call this one G for grade. Then I'll come and say is equal to if. Now, the also good thing with if is that it's actually a repetition. We keep repeating stuff. As you are going to see, we simply keep repeating stuff. In as much as it's, it seems like it is, it is uh, it's, um, uh, over, can I say long? but we just keep repeating stuff. So we're going to say it's equal to if the score for English here is greater than or equal to 85. What should be given if it is true? The student should be awarded a D1. How about if it's not true? We go back. Now I want you to use the, you, you, you check what we are typing from the formula bar here because this, column here is very is very small and stuff is going to be congested so you can look at what you're doing from the formula bar here comma if mm -hmm, the score is between 8 and 84 so we are going to say is greater than or equal to 84 then what should happen oh sorry so we say a score what should happen the student should be given a d Two. What if it's not true? We go back and perform. So we keep performing the logical test about the same value, greater than or equal to now 70. Yes. Yes, please. Is this supposed to be 84? Oh, it's 80, sorry, not 84. 80. Good. Thank you for that correction. 70. What should happen? It should be a C3. Otherwise, if it's not true, we proceed and perform another logical test until when we get done with them all. So is equal to, if this value is greater than and equal now to what? Equal to, I think it's 65. To 65, what should happen? It should be a C4. C4. Mm. Are you talking to me, Steve? 
No, I was just following you. Okay, if uh -huh, this value is greater than or equal to now 60, the student should be given a C5. If not true, we go ahead until when they are all done. So uh, C5, if this same value here is greater than or equal to now 50, the student should be given a C6. Otherwise, if this same value here is greater than or equal to uh, 45, the student should be given a pass seven, comma, if this value here is greater than or equal to now 40, the student should be given a pass eight. Now see, we on pass eight and we are saying, if it's not a D1, it's not a D2, it's not a C3, it's not a pass eight, then obviously it's going to be an F9. So we don't perform another logical test. So we just come and say, otherwise that student should be now given an F9, should be given an F9 as a last option. So it's not D1, it's not D2, it's not C3, it's not C4, not C5, not C6, not pass seven, not pass eight, then obviously it's going to be an F9. So if that is it, then just put it as the last option. Then after doing all that, make sure that you close all your brackets. Good thing is that as you close the brackets, they keep highlighting until when all of them have been closed. So there I've closed all the brackets, I press enter. Now I've pressed enter and yeah, everything is cool. So my comments are right there. Now, when I'm going to do this, because Excel is beautiful, it makes our work very easy. I don't have to retype that here. I don't have to retype that here. I don't have to retype that here. I just go and copy this column. Copy. Uh, Mr. Moses. Yes, please. Uh, someone, a participant is asking for you to zoom a bit. He's interested in that part. Zoom a bit. Okay. Oh, uh, is it zooming the formula? I think. I'm going to copy it and take it to word processing. Because, uh, okay, let me try that to do this. Good. Let me try to do this. This is the formula. If B2, so I can just, uh, so you're saying if B2 is greater than A to Is that okay now? You can even copy the formula and paste in the chat. Perhaps you can copy that. Oh, yes. I'm going to do that, I think. So let me copy this and take to the chats. So I've, uh, I've pasted it in the chats. Yes, thank you, so, sir. After this point, I press enter. Now I was telling members that because Excel allows us to use the autofill function or feature rather, we don't have to go and retype everywhere. Just go and select this column here, copy it, come and paste it here, come and paste it here, come and paste it here. And we are done. Moses, so that, yes, please. Will you please click in cell E2? E so that in we cell see the e, formula. E2. E2. Yes. Now, this is the formula for cell E2. Let me just do this and first uh, make it wide a little. So, this is now the formula. So, instead of B2, now Excel is capturing D2. Yeah, thank you so much. So that is the second way of using Excel. I mean, of using the if function. Now, the third way 
is when we are given those instructions that people keep struggling with, uh, that, that keep confusing people. If this one earns this, tax them like this, and do this, and do this, oh goodness, this data can run, my goodness. Okay. Okay. Let me hope it will be able to take us through. So now, another option, another question that I'm having is this one here. Let's also look at this question. Let's look at this question. I'm having that question there, where we are having this table. So I'm going to copy this table and take it to Excel. And here they are telling us that basic pay is assigned according to the salary scale, where a person in salary scale A is assigned 1, 000, 1, 000, B is 1 million and C is 900,000. And you want to use Excel to assign these employees their basic salary. And then we have another option here for, for I'm going to create another instruction for tax. Because it uh, to link it to the question that was given to us today, that was in the group today, that uh, led to the led to, to this discussion. So let's start with assigning basic salary using the if function. So I'm going to copy this and take it to, and I want people to notice the difference between what we have just done and what we are going to do in this next question. So that you try to get uh, the real uh, issue about this if function. So you're having the, scale, the salary scale here. So I copy this and take it to this table. I am just going to paste it there. So for salary scale A, it is this. For salary scale B, it is that. For salary scale C, it's that. Then I will come and say, we're supposed to use the if function to assign the basic pay to these individual members. So what are we going to say? Is equal to if, if what? This one here is equal to what? To A. Now, A being a label. The other side, we are saying if B2 is equal to 8, greater than or equal to 85, the 85 was not put in double quotes. Now, here I'm saying if B2 is equal to A, because we cannot say it's greater than or equal to A. A is a label. It's either A or not A. There's nothing like there's a range of letters between A and D, between D and C, uh, O and D and G, that's not there. So here we're using equal signs. So you're saying if the value in, or if the letter in this cell here is equal to A, and A being a label, we put it in double quotes. What should be done? It should be assigned a salary scale of 1,200,000. Now we are not going to put the 1,200,000 in double quotes. Why? Because it is a value. It is a value and therefore we don't put values in double quotes. Comma. If the salary scale is equal to what? To B. What should be done? It should be given a salary of one. That employee should be assigned one million as the salary. Now, like I told Hello? you, I don't have to go and perform a medical test. Why? Because, yes, please. Do, do spellings matter? For example, if I type capital L, small a. Oh, yes. I'm going to do. No, it's not case sensitive, but spellings matter. With the case, it's not case sensitive. Whether lowercase or uppercase, it's okay. But spellings, it's very critical. And I'm going to show you here. I'm going to make a deliberate mistake and you see what I'm trying to talk about. And then we are saying, because we are having one last option, we don't have to perform another logical test. Just put it as a value if false. So it is 900,000. Now, even if we don't capture, that if uh, the letter is C, 
because we know the salary scales are three, it's either A, B, or C. So we don't have, oh, sorry. Can I mistake somewhere? I clicked the wrong button, okay? And then after this, we close our brackets. So I think if the salary scale is A, assign it 1,200 million, uh, 1 million, 200,000. If the scale is B, assign it to 1 million. If it's not A and it's not B, assign it 900,000 because obviously it's going to be C. According to our table, we only have three options. Now we press enter and these guys are going to be assigned their salary. Like that. Moses? So, yes, please. I have a question. Yes, please. Supposing the A, you interchange the cases like this for the same, but in B3, it says small A. What happens when you type a small? Now, let's uh, go to those deliberate cases. So, in case we come here and instead of uppercase, we put lowercase, right? Like yes. that. Yeah it doesn't affect the result because it is the same later. So okay. Excel is not sensitive to. A mistake that you can never do and go unnoticed is for example, when it comes to spellings and punctuations. If I come here and just, uh, am I breaking, am I okay? You're now fine. Good. If, for example, Moses, instead of letter A, excuse, I excuse me. Yes, please. Mm, I got this question on UBTEP. When I was talking to a friend that the A is a, is, is a level, is not a value, we're not supposed to put in the quotes, but that, that instructor challenged me and then uh, he made us to put them in, in quotes. Instead of putting them outside the quotes, but we made this if A equals to the values. But so I can I get you can I get you query quite clearly? I was saying yes. I met this question on one of the UBT examinations. Yes. And then a, a friend challenged me that labels are not supposed to be in quotes in relation to this question. But I told him no, they are supposed to be in quotes and then the values should be outside. But uh, he made us. Yeah, he made us to do it that way. We got the correct answer, but uh, I was worried about But today I got the it clear. It's no, very in, good. While using the if function, labels are in quotes. Okay. Values are not in quotes. Fine. Okay. Now, Thanks what so I was talking about is this. If, for example, I make here a deliberate mistake. So this was letter A. If I put space like that after letter A, we want to see whether there's a change. Are you seeing the, the value that has appeared now? It's now 900,000. Why? Because Excel is now taking it as the value if false. So it's not recognizing this as A. It's recognizing it as what? A and something else. So it's not A. Also, when I remove that space, we get the correct value. If I also come here, and put a space here, like that, the same scenario happens. So Excel is one very sensitive to punctuations and spellings, just like database. Be very, very critical when doing that. All right, now that is the second way. So for these ones here, obviously we know we are going to use a mixed reference. I'm just going to say is equal to this, uh, Timos that, Oop. and then you can fill this way and fill downwards. That one is done. I'm not looking at that today, definitely. So for gross pay, we have the sum of, oh, what's wrong? So we just have this uh, is equal to the sum. Now there's something I want to bring in, the sum of this. Perfect. Now, instead of pay, I want to put tax so that we also do this. 
about it. Supposing it is given that, supposing it is given that members who are in salary scale, okay, let's say uh, salary scale, uh -huh, then tax rate, tax rate. So salary scale vis-a-vis -vis the tax rate. Now let's say members who are in salary scale A are taxed at 18%. Members in salary scale B are taxed at maybe 12%. And members in salary scale C are taxed at uh, maybe 8%. So these are percentages. So you're going to put percent percent and percent. I guess this one is quite resembling what we were talking about in the group earlier on. So here the taxing is not the same for all members. They're taxed differently. But what are we looking at? We are looking at the salary scale. We are taxing them according to gross pay, but we are looking at the salary scale. So what are we saying? Here also the if function is the one that is going to work because we are having several conditions, several options that are offered. Now here what we say, we're going to say is equal to if the salary scale is equal to what? A, what should happen? This one, it should be taxed at what? At 18% times 18%. So what are we telling Excel to do? We are saying, we are telling Excel to check this. Check if this is A, then get its corresponding gross pay and tax it at 18%. So we're trying to find the tax. Otherwise, if the salary scale here is equal to B, what should happen? Tax this at 12%. And what if it's not salary scale A and it's not salary scale B? Then it's obviously salary scale C. So what do you do to it? tax this at 8%. I don't know whether members are okay with me at this point. Is there anyone who has a query on this? Anyone with a question on this? Okay, let me press enter. You realize that these members have been taxed according to their salary scales. I want to pick out one and we see whether it's true. So this is a member in salary scale C. This is their value. It's supposed to be multiplied by 8%. So I'm going to say this. Yes, Amos. Yes, thank you so much, Moses. My question is on uh, the way you're doing that. If Why are you putting the label A, B in quotes? For my thought, you put in quotes what you want to return, what you want to be returned. Great, good question. Now, it's not obvious that we have to put what we want to return in double quotes. We are saying, when using the if function, what goes, in, what goes into the double quotes is a label. If at all, now let's say for example, if I wasn't looking at the salary scale, let's say if I was saying, if the value in now what? Instead of B2, I say in C2, I want to change this. So if I say the value in C2 is equal to what? To 1,200,000. Because I know A is equal to 1,200,000. Do this. If the value in C2 is equal to what? 
1 million. Do that. Then finally, do that. Then I press enter. I'll get my answer still the same way. Amos, have I used double quotes anywhere? Not really. Good. Now let me apply double quotes. If I come here and apply double quotes like this, like that, like this, like that. Then also, uh, where? Here. Like that. And like that. Because that is literally what is supposed to be returned, you not so? Yeah. Good. Then I press enter. Okay. What have we got? I hope you notice the difference now. Yeah. But we only okay. put in quotes if it is a value, I mean a label. So in this case, whatever you put in double quotes has, has come back the way it was because we like kind of told Excel, this is what should be returned, the exact way it's appearing. I don't know whether you now get the difference, but I mean, you know when to use the double quotes. Yeah, there I get you. Good. So we come and remove the double quotes. Any other question? Okay, my other, like go back to basic, basic pay. Basic pay. In this side yeah. of the basic pay. Mm. Yes. I just want to go to the formula bar and be like, you, 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 you remove the whatever, the, the, the double I remove quotes the and I see. Yes, and I see. Good, let me remove them. Mm. And actually this also responds to, to the other guy's uh, question, where the, 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 the friend examiner told them that they have to put double quotes on values and not labels. When you put on, when you don't put double quotes on labels, this is what you get. Yes, Moses, we have another hand from Mr. Jambo. Yes, Job. Yes, thank you, Banamazen. Yes. Hope you're getting me clear. Yeah? Oh, definitely, I'm getting you. Uh, now for me, I want you. I want you to use these tax rates: the eighteen percent, twelve percent, and uh, and ten percent. I want you. Of, uh, want I want you to use. I want you to use these tax rates. Eh? Yes. In form of uh, an absolute say, reference, instead of using the values. The oh, using absolute then, referencing. Yes. Perfect. I want to see how now you let me also the, hope, by what we are going to do. Let me hope members understand. Let me hope members understand what we call cell referencing. It's a very, very key factor. Like here, I used mixed references. I hope members knew what I did because I only typed one formula and autofilled everywhere. Now here we are going to use absolute referencing. Now, what am I going to say? I'm going to say, let me first delete all this. Actually. With absolute referencing, life becomes more easier. Now, this is what we are going to say. We are going to say is equal to if this value here is equal to this value here. But this value must be absolutely referenced. What should be done? We should get this percentage absolutely referenced, multiplied by the gross pay. Otherwise, if this is equal to that absolutely referenced, what should be done? This 
absolutely refreshed. Timers. This. Absolutely refreshed. Otherwise, it's this absolute timers that absolute. Wow. This is how it looks like. Is there any, any that I did not make absolutely referenced? Uh, this not. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, times this. This is not absolutely. This is not supposed to be absolutely referenced. Sorry. And this is not supposed to be absolutely referenced. Like that. Then I press enter. I didn't close the brackets. So we close, we accept to close, and the same values are returned. So this is using absolute referencing where we don't need to type any value. So long as you know that the value you want to use in is in a cell this and a cell this, you don't need to type those values. Now that Excel even makes it very, very cheap for you. Yo, have I answered your question? Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Ma. I've, I've got it. All right. Any other question? Question in the chat bar. There's a question in the chat bar. From hey, me. Yeah. Um, that is from Teacher Miro. Eh? Is that is this from Teacher Miro? Yeah. How to use referencing. Now, using referencing, truth be told, for Excel to, smooth, to be smooth, referencing should be at the fingertips of everyone. We have three kinds of referencing that we basically use in Excel. We have the relative referencing, the mixed referencing, the absolute referencing. We use, we use relative referencing when we want the cell addresses to change. For example, here, what did we say? Uh, for example, let's go to our sheet one. This is worksheet one. When we're finding the total. Oh, sorry. Let me first go back here. Okay, so let's go to worksheet one. So for example, here when we're finding the total, we said is equal to sum of B2. Okay, it's now showing to H2, but it's B2, uh, B2, D2, F2, and H2, the total. When we come to, when we autofill this formula here, we believe that the references must change from row two to row three, and then to row four. A formula where the cell addresses have to change whenever you copy that formula to other cells is called a relative reference. We use it when we want Excel to capture the next group of cells, whenever we copy that formula, or whenever we move the formula to other cells. Excel has been built in such a way that it's intelligent enough to recognize that now I have moved from row two, I'm in row three, so I should capture the group of cells that correspond to row three. It's also intelligent enough to know that I've now moved from column one, I mean column A to column B, and therefore I need to capture the values in column B. That is relative referencing. So if you don't apply anything, the cells remain relative. relative. Secondly, we apply, let's, let me just create uh, one more column here to also uh, clarify this. So I'm going to, for example, assign positions here. So in positions, I'll say is equal to rank. Everyone knows how to rank. Is equal to rank. What are we ranking according maybe to total? So you're saying J2 is uh -huh, the number. The reference is this whole column. But remember that for every student that we assign a position, we are going to be referring to the same reference or the same group or the same class or the same range of cells. So for us to be able to tell Excel that every time refer to that group of cells, we make it absolutely referenced. 
by applying a dollar sign. Comma. What's the order? In this case, we take descending order and then we press enter. Now for this kind here, if you autofill, you see that this reference here was J2 to J9. When we come to the next group of cells, I mean to the next row, it has still remained the same. When we come to the next row, it has still remained the same, J2 to J9. And even when we come to the last cell row, it's still the same, J2 to J9. When do we use absolute referencing? We use absolute referencing whenever we want to always refer to the same range of cells. We don't want the cell addresses to change. In that case, we use absolute referencing. Then finally, there's this one that is very, very much interesting, the mixed referencing, the one I used here. When I'm having my values arranged like this, and these ones arranged like this, for math, uh, for teachers here who teach ICT and math, you should be knowing what we call uh, uh, matrices, row by column stuff. So here, what I'm going to do is, I'm not going to struggle to come and type a formula here. Go and type another one here. Go and type another one here. No. Here, I apply mixed referencing. How? I'll come to this cell here. So I'm going to delete this for now. And say, in this case, what am I multiplying to get the housing allowance? I'm multiplying this by this. Are you together? Then I will know that when I'm feeling this way, I want Excel to capture column D, go to E, go to F. So I'll come to this D and say now that the row is going to remain the same because the percentage is in row two, but the columns are going to keep changing because I'm moving from D to E to F. So I fix the row. Now I come and fix the row like that. I leave the column to change. Then for this other one here, I know that when I'm feeling downwards, I want the rows to change. But then when I'm feeling sideways, I want the same column to be maintained because the column we see where this space is found. So I will come and fix the column and leave the rows to change. Then I press enter. This one is enough for me to feel this way and feel that way without retyping the formula. So that makes referencing very easy. Any question? Because we are, we, I think we are running short of time. Is there any other question as regards the if function? I think, I think uh, Moses, thank you, we've covered, we've covered enough. This is good for members to start. Unless okay. there is a comment or an, an announcement, we have our president online. Does he have something to say, Mr. Rishamuzi? Okay, Miro has a hand up. Yes, teacher Miro. Teacher Miro, please. But is he online? Yes. Oh, just okay. and, I think okay. And Sorry for that. that. So we have uh, maybe an announcement. Okay. Uh, next, we are going to have calculations in access with Mr. Hakuru Penal. That will be next Tuesday. Uh, Mr. Wamono, are you online? Do you have anything to say before we close? Can I just uh, say something, uh, Mr. Steve? Steve? Okay. Yes, please. Okay. Thank Steve, you, Mr. Dupla, plus the presenter, that is Mr. Moses, plus all the other participants. I have nothing to say apart from appreciating all the people for always coming in to share these skills in each one, teach one. We also appeal to other people, as you mentioned it earlier, that please let us use our WhatsApp group to always find the time 
to post in our kind of uh, topics we want to share with the colleagues. We are going to have uh, a form which we shall keep sharing in our group for people who are interested to volunteer in this cause. 